ambazo zile 7 weeks ni 7 times 7 ambayo inakupatia siku 49 ambazo siku 49 kwa mujibu unabii itakuwa ni miaka 49 yani 49 years kutoka 457 BC unapohesabu 49 years inakuleta 408 BC ambapo tuliweza kuona inapofika 408 BC kulingana na unabii wa Danieli tukaona ya kwamba 408 BC ndipo Wayahudi wanapewa ama wanamaliza kuijenga Yerusalemu tena upya na hekalu mwaka wa 408 BC Kumbuka unabii huu unapotolewa wa 1300 tuliweza kuangalia jana ni kipindi ambapo Israeli na Wayahudi wako mateka Babeli na wakati huo Daniel anapopokea njozi Babeli wameanguka wanao tawala ni Waamedi na Waajemi na sasa Mungu anatoa unabii huu wa kumuonyesha Daniel ya kwamba wakati umekaribia wakati umetimia Waisraeli kurudi tena katika Yerusalemu wakaende wakaujenge tena upya mji wa Yerusalemu na kuta zake pamoja na hekalu na basi ikawa ndio hivyo na ndio tunaona kutoka 47 BC unaposoma Ezra chapter 6 verse 14 na Ezra chapter 7 verse 8 to verse number 9 utagundua amri hiyo inatolewa maana amri inayotolewa ilitolewa mara nne inatolewa mara ya kwanza na Dario inatolewa na Koreshi na kisha mwisho yule anayetoa amri hii ya mwisho anakuwa ni Ataxerxes 1 yule mfalme wa Persia yani wajemi anayetoa amri na kuandika barua ile ya kwamba sasa wameruhusiwa wayahudi waende waijenge tena upya Yerusalemu na wamalizishe kabisa kuta zake na hekalu na hiyo inatukia mwaka wa saba kabla ya Kristo 457 BC unapoata unapoingia kwenye Wikipedia www. utakapoingia pale utagundua ndiyo taarifa ile tunayopewa kwa hivyo 457 BC ndiyo ana amri na toleo ya kuijenga tena Yerusalemu na kisha baadaye inapofika 48 inakuwa kwamba hekalu imekamilika. Tukaweza kuona kutoka 48 BC zikawa zimesalia majuma 62. Maana tuliposoma Danieli 9:25 tukaambiwa ya kwamba kutoka katika kujengwa kwa ukuta za Yerusalemu mpaka kuja kwake Masihi zitakuwa ni majuma 62, yani 60 and 2 weeks. Ambapo tukaona 62 weeks times 7 inakupatia 434 years. Tukaona kutoka 48 BC ukiongeza 434 years inakuleta 27 AD. Tuliweza kupiga hesabu hiyo jana. Kwa sababu ya muda tutarudi kufanya mambo hayo. Kwa hivyo we utaenda ufanye revisit. Uende upitie ile somo ambayo tulifanya jioni ya jana. Kwa hivyo inapofika 27 AD tukaona Kristo, Yesu Kristo anabatizwa. Na ndio tukaanza kulielewa neno hili Masihi ambapo tulielewa neno masihi ni neno la Kiebrania maana yake mti wa mafuta ambapo kwa Kigiriki ni neno a uh, Kristo yani Kristo kwa Kigiriki kwa Kiyahudi au kwa Kiyunani ni masihi ambayo maana yake ni mti wa mafuta au the anointed one kwa hivyo Yesu Kristo anakuwa anointed 27 AD kipindi anapobatizwa na ndiye utakaposoma Luka 4 aya yake ni ya kwanza tunaambiwa Yesu Kristo a kaongozwa nyikani au jangwani na Roho Mtakatifu ili aende akajaribiwe huko muda wa siku 40. Na kisha anaporejea kutoka jangwani, unaposoma kitabu cha Luka 4, aya yake ni ya 16, tunaambiwa akaenda Nazareti, hapo alipolelewa. Na siku ya Sabato akaingia sinagogi ili asali kama ilivyo desturi yake. Na kisha akatua chuo cha nabii Isaya, akafungua mahali palipoandika mstari wa 18 ndio tunaambiwa, akafungua mahali palipoandika ipoandikwa roho wa bwana iju juu ju yangu kwa maana amenitia mafuta ni wahubiri masikini habari njema na wafungwa kufunguliwa kwao kwa hivyo inakuwa kwamba kwa mujibu wa maandiko masihi au kutiwa kwake mafuta Yesu Kristo kuna tukia wakati ambapo roho mtakatifu anamjilia juu yake na ndio wakati roho mtakatifu anapomjilia Kristo juu yake ni kipindi kile Yesu Kristo anapotokeza katika maji ya ubatizo na anapopanda anapopanda kutoka majini ndipo ishara inaonekana kutoka mbinguni wingu likafunguka na kisha akaonekana roho mtakatifu akishuka mfano wa njiwa au mfano wa huwa akatua juu yake na sauti ikasikiwa ikitoka mbinguni ikisema huyu ni mwanangu mpendwa wangu ninayependezwa naye ikawa kwamba Yesu Kristo anatiwa mafuta kuwa masihi mwaka wa 27 AD 
tukasoma hilo na tukaona baadaye akafanya kazi yake kwa muda kutoka 27 AD akafanya kwa jumla ya miaka mitatu nusu kisha inapofika mwaka wa 31 AD kwa mujibu wa Danieli 9 aya ya 26 na 27 na tukaambiwa ya kwamba ataikomesha kafara na dhabihu na ndio Yesu Kristo anapokufa mwaka wa 31 AD anasulubishwa pale msalabani Yesu Kristo anapokufa anaikomesha kafara na dhabihu kivipi ndio unaposoma kwenye maandiko unagundua ya kwamba kipindi kile Yesu Kristo anapokata roho pale msalabani kuna kuwa na mtetemeko katika nchi na pazia iliyokuwa imetenganisha patakatifu na patakatifu mno katika hekalu inapasuka katikati na mwana kondoo aliyekuwa karibu kuchinjwa pale saa tisa mchana yule mwana kondoo anatoweka maana kafara kamili ambaye ni Yesu Kristo ameshakufa na ndio kwa nini jioni leo na kwa nini leo hii hatutoi kafara ya mwana kondoo kwa sababu kafara kamili ambaye ni Yesu Kristo alishachinjwa na ndio sasa tunaishi katika imani ya mwana kondoo ambaye ni Yesu Kristo hili natukia mwaka wa 31 AD na ndio tukaona miaka kuanzia 31 AD miaka mitatu nusu baadaye inatufikisha mwaka wa 34 AD na pale 34 AD ndipo tukaweza kuona ya kwamba probation ya Wayahudi inafungwa. Yaani muda waliopewa na Mungu wa majuma sabini ambao zilikuwa ni sawa na miaka 490. Muda huo unafika mwisho wake na unafika mwisho mwaka wa 34 AD. Ambapo inakuwa marked kipindi kile ambacho Stefano anapigwa mawe. Kipindi kile na Wayahudi wakiwa pale. Na ndio unapomtazama huyu uh, Stefano anapopigwa mawe unapoingia katika kitabu cha matendo ya mitume pale ni uh, natumaini ni saba pale unamuona huyu Stefano anapopigwa mawe ukimtazama Stefano kabla hajakata roho utamsikia akizungumza anasema yeye anapotazama mbinguni akiwaambia Wayahudi anamuona Yesu akiwa amesimama mkono wa kuume wa Mungu katika kiti chake cha enzi pale mbinguni kwa hivyo inakuwa kwamba huyu anapomuona anamuona Yesu sasa inabadilishwa ile a, a, wakati ambapo probation ya Wayahudi anaiona huyu Stefano akiwa anapigwa mawe pale pale anaona ya kwamba sasa kipindi na muda waliopewa Wayahudi unafika mwisho wake na inakuwa sasa injili inafunguliwa na kuanza kwenda kwa watu wa mataifa Ndiyo tukaweza kuelewa mambo haya kuanzia 34 AD tunaona kutoka baada ya 490 years kuisha tumebakia na 1810 ambayo inatuleta mwaka wa 1844 na ndio inapofika mwaka wa 1844 hapo ndipo tukaweza kugundua ya kwamba Mungu anazaa kundi la watu katika uso dunia Mungu anazaa imani ya watu katika uso dunia ambao watu hao wanaozaliwa wanazaliwa kwa jukumu moja jukumu ambalo sasa tunataka kuweza kulielewa siku ya leo na kesho na siku zitakazofuatia hadi tutakapotamatisha ili tuweze kuelewa watu hawa ambao kwamba Mungu anawainua anatoa jukumu na kuwapa responsibility maana Mungu anawazaa kwa wakati anapowazaa watu hawa kwa wakati anawazaa akiwa na jukumu kwa ajili yao kwa wakati na ndio tutatafuta kuweza kuelewa jambo hili sasa inakuwa kwamba inakuwa jambo ambalo la msingi ambao lazima tukaanze kulielewa ni jambo hili maana Mungu tumeangalia katika kitabu cha kutoka 24 25 aya ya nane Mungu anapozungumza na Musa anamwambia na wanifanyie patakatifu ili nikae kati yao. Kwa hivyo inakuwa kwamba patakatifu yani the sanctuary ni makao ya Mungu au makazi ya Mungu. Hapo ndipo Mungu anakokaa. Na hapo ndipo Mungu anapofanya huduma yake. Na hapo ndipo Mungu anapoleta ufahamu kwa ajili ya watu wake. Tumesoma Danieli uh, kitabu cha kutoka 25, tumesoma aya ya mbili na ndio tutataka tusonge kwenye hatua nyingine zaidi maana tulipoanza kuchunguza kuna swali kubwa ambalo liliweza kusalia jioni ya jana maana tulipoangalia then shall the sanctuary be cleansed maana tuliambiwa katika danieli 8:14 unto 2300 days then shall the sanctuary be cleansed swali ambalo tulisalia nalo jioni ya jana tukataka kuelewa what is the sanctuary ni hekalu gani hii ni patakatifu gani hapa ambapo panatakaswa maana lazima mimi na wewe tuanze kuelewa jambo hili. Hili ni point la muhimu ambalo lazima tulielewe. Maana maandiko kama tunaambiwa lazima kama kuna hekali inayotakaswa itakuwa jambo la msingi na jambo la muhimu ikiwa mimi na wewe tutakuwa tunalielewa tutambue na kufahamu ni hekalu ipi hii inayotakaswa. Sikiliza basi. Tunapoingia kwenye maandiko 
Unapomtazama huyo jamaa kwenye picha najua wale ambao wamesoma church heritage na wanatambua kuelewa historia ya imani hili ya Adventist ama wa Adventist wa Sabato utamtambua jamaa huyu anatambulika kwa jina la William Miller. Huyu William Miller yeye ndiye yule ambaye anatumika katika zamani hizo ambapo kwamba unaposoma historia yake kuanzia mwaka wa 1830s 1833-34 pale ndipo Mungu anaanza kumuinua jamaa anaitwa William Miller. Huyu William Miller anapochunguza maandiko na kusoma anafika pale kwenye Daniel 8:14 ambapo maandiko inasema in Daniel 8:14 unto 2300 days then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Na anaposoma yeye katika tafsiri na ufahamu wake kipindi hicho wanaubiri ya kwamba hekalu ile inayotakaswa katika mawazo yao wao wanafikiria ni ulimwengu unatakaswa maana umejaa dhambi yani kwamba Yesu Kristo anarudi humu duniani mara ya pili. Maana unaposoma katika Danieli tunaambiwa ya kwamba Kristo alikuwa anakuja to the ancient of days. Hakuwa anakuja hapa duniani lakini hawakuelewa kwa zamani hizo. Lakini unaposoma utagundua walikuwa wameelewa vitu viwili. Kuna kitu kimoja tu ambacho waliweza kukikosea. Waliweza kuelewa they had the correct understanding of time. Walipopiga hesabu ya 2300 years jinsi ambavyo tulipiga jioni ya jana ikawaleta mwaka wa 1844 the correct understanding vizuri kabisa. Walikuwa na the correct understanding um, kuna kitu kingine kimetoka kwenye kichwa lakini walikuwa na the correct understanding ya vitu viwili kitu kimoja ambapo waliweza kukikosea walikosa a correct understanding ya the event ambayo ilikuwa iweze kutukia walikosa kuelewa matukio maana katika matukio yao wao walielewa ya kwamba Kristo anakuja they had the right understanding of time they had the correct message but they had the wrong understanding of the event na ndio walipokuwa nafikiria kwamba Yesu anakuja Yesu hakuwa anakuja duniani Aa, alikuwa anaenda mbele ya kiti cha enzi cha baba In, alikuwa anaingia unaposoma Danieli 7 tunaambiwa he was coming to the ancient of days ambapo alikuwa anakuja ili apewe mamlaka na hukumu ikawa kwamba sasa ye, wao wanaposoma hawakuweza kuelewa na ndio unaposoma kitabu kinaitwa Christ in his sanctuary page 112 paragraph 1 Christ in his sanctuary page 112 paragraph 1 tunaambiwa hivi In the typical system which was a shadow of the sacrifice and the priesthood of Christ the cleansing of the sanctuary was the last service performed by the high priest in the yearly round of ministration it was the closing work of the atonement a removal or putting away of sin from Israel. Kwa hivyo walikuwa na understanding kabisa ya vitu vingine ambavyo vilikuwa vinaendelea. Sikiza tunaambiwa it, it prefigured the closing work in the administration of our high priest in heaven in the removal or blotting out of the sins of his people which are registered in the heavenly records. This service involves a work of investigation, a work of judgment and it immediately precedes the coming of Christ in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. For when he comes every case has been decided it is this work of judgment immediately preceding the second advent that is announced in the first angel's message walikosa the right understanding kwa wakati ule of the event kwa nini maana kile ambacho kilikuwa kinafanyika najua mmeshasikia utaniruhusu tu nitataja vitu vingine kwa sasa lakini uyashike tu kwenye kichwa chako tutaendelea kuyachimba kwa undani jioni ya kesho na siku zinakuja lakini kwa sasa zishike tu hivyo Unase, umesikia kuna kitu ambacho kinatajwa umesikia kitu kama kwa mfano investigative judgment ambapo kwamba katika kanisa ila wa Adventist ni kitu ambacho tunapigana nacho na ulimwengu unapotutazama sisi wa Adventist wa sababu tunapozungumzia jambo la investigative judgment wanatuita sisi ni cult Ulimwengu unaposikia tunapozungumzia the 2300 day prophecy kwa sababu wengi wetu tumezoea kutegemea sana roho ya unabii kiasi kwamba hatuwezi tukategemea maandiko na kuweza kufundisha jambo hili ndio ulimwengu unatuita sisi ni cult kwa sababu wanafikiria mambo haya tunayatoa kwa dada white na ndio jana tulikwenda hatua kubwa kuangalia 2300 day prophecy bila kuzingatia sana ma maelezo ya dada white tukawa tunaangalia andiko kwa andiko tukaruhusu bibilia iweze kujizungumzia Yaani bila kukoti dada White tokaruhusu Biblia iweze kujizungumzia ili tuweze kuelewa ya kwamba jambo hili la 2300 days jambo hili kuhusiana na hekalu sio invention ya sister White Nataka uweze kuelewa point hiyo 
maana sio mama White aliyeamka akaanza kuzungumza habari za patakatifu hapana sio invention yake anapozungumza na kutaja kuna patakatifu mbinguni sio kwamba ni invention yake aliyeamka nitakuonyesha kwa dakika chache na ndio sasa wanapozungumza hawa walianza kuelewa baada ya disappointment inayotokea 1844 ndio huyu anaandika Christ in sanctuary page 112 paragraph 1 ya kwamba wanaanza kuelewa matukio the events ambazo zilikuwa zinafanyika ilikuwa kwamba kumbe Yesu alikuwa asije kumbe alikuwa anaingia to the ancient of days in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary for the ministration ya kumaliza kazi ndipo aweze kuja na ndiye unaposoma kitabu cha ufunuo wa Yohana 22 ufunuo wa Yohana 22 unapoanzia aya yake ni ya 12 utamsikia Yesu Kristo anazungumza anasema akizungumza na Yohana anasema natazama naja upesi na ujira wangu upa pamoja nami kumlipa kila mtu sawa na kazi yake ilivyo na ndio swali tunajiuliza itawezekanaje kwamba Kristo anapokuja anakuja kumlipa kila mtu sawa na kazi yake ilivyo wakati kwamba kabla hajakuja hakuwa na muda wa kuweza kuchunguza matendo na maisha ya watu hawa Inakuwa basi kama anakuja kumlipa kila mtu sawa na matendo yake alivyo ina maana ya kwamba basi lazima angalikuwa na wakati wa kuweza kufanya investigation ya maisha ya watu hawa anaokuja kuwalipa sawa na matendo yao yalivyo na nipo sasa wakaanza kuelewa ya kwamba kumbe Kristo anapokawilisha kuja kwake ile disappointment inayotokea 1844 sio kwamba Kristo alikuwa aje duniani aa alikuwa anaingia into the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary kwa ajili ya kwanza jukumu fulani ambalo tutaweza kulielewa jioni ya leo na asua jioni ya kesho ambapo nitakuwa ninajenga kwa undani zaidi na ndio unapozidi kusoma Christ in sanctuary page 112 paragraph 2 msikilize anavyozidi kuzungumza akizungumzia mambo haya yaliyotokea anasema those who proclaimed this warning gave the right message at the right time walikuwa na the right message and they had the right understanding of time lakini kitu walichokosea the interpretation of the event was wrong maana walifikiria Yesu alikuwa anakuja the second coming lakini it was not the second coming kile ambacho kilikuwa kinatimilika ilikuwa ni kwamba Yesu Kristo alikuwa anaingia into the ancient of days kwa ajili ya kumalizisha jukumu na responsibility nyingine na ndio tunaambiwa those who proclaim this warning gave the right message at the right time but as the early disciples declared the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of god is at hand based on the prophecy of Daniel 9 while they failed to perceive that the death of the messiah was foretold in the same scripture yani walimzungumzia huyu Yesu Kristo ilikuwa kwamba jana tukaona hawa wayahudi walikaa wakitumainia mambo ya hekalu walikuwa pale wakitoa kafara ya mwana kondoo walikuwa pale wakisherehekea pasaka wakifuata maandiko na ndio Yesu anawaambia mnayachunguza maandiko mkidhani kwamba ndani yake mna uzima wa milele lakini ni hayo yanayo nishuhudia mimi yani walichunguza maandiko na wakafuata kweli lakini walikosa kuelewa matukio Yesu Kristo anapotokeza wakakosa kuelewa na ndio tunaambiwa ya kwamba kile kilichokuwa they failed to perceive the death of the messiah was foretold in the same scripture inapozungumzia na wanafunzi pia so miller and his associates preached the message based on daniel 8:14 and revelation 14:7 and failed to see that there were still other messages brought to view in revelation 14 which were also to be given before the advent of the lord as the disciples were mistaken in regard to the kingdom to be set up at the end of the 70 weeks so adventists were mistaken in regard to the event to take place at the expiration of the 2300 days both classes fulfilled the will of god in delivering the message which he desired to be given and both through their own misapprehension of their message suffered disappointment wakakosa kuweza kuelewa kwa hivyo walikuwa na the right message walikuwa na understanding at the right time lakini wakawa na the wrong understanding of the event hawakuelewa matukio yanayotendeka na ndio mimi na wewe jambo la muhimu lazima tuanze kuelewa haya matukio mwisho wa 2300 days ni nini asua kinachoendelea ni nini asua kinachofanyika ambacho kinaendelea mpaka sasa na ni nini asua ambacho kimekawirisha kuja kwa Yesu Kristo mara ya pili kwa umbali huu ambao tunazidi kuchunguza hata jioni ya sasa Sikiliza ni kuonyeshe kwenye ushahidi wa maandiko. Nataka nikupe mashahidi wanne ambao watakuonyesha wazi ya kwamba hekalu inayotengenezwa hapa duniani, the sanctuary that was made here on earth was a copy of the sanctuary in heaven. Sikiliza taratibu. Maana ili somo 
tunapozungumzia the sanctuary maana katika imani kipindi wakati ule mwingine nilipokuwa hapa tuliona ushahidi wa watu wawili ambapo katika imani hii la Kiadventista mmoja alikuepo hapa Kenya mwaka jana akiwa anasema ya kwamba hamna sanctuary na hakuna kitu kinaitwa the investigative judgment maana ugonjwa huu upo katika kanisa hili kwa sababu wengi hatujisomee maandiko peke yetu hatuchunguzi kutafuta kuweza kuelewa sikiliza nikuonyeshe ushahidi ya kwamba pale mbinguni there is a sanctuary maana the devil understands when you do away with the sanctuary message you've done away with the seventh day adventism ni fora taratibu jioni leo utaweza kunielewa tu witness number one anaitwa Moses Musa Musa anapozungumza na Mungu anaambiwa hivi katika Exodus chapter 25 verse number 8 to verse number 9 sikize Mungu anamwambia Musa anamwambia and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them according to all that I shew thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of the, all the instruments thereof even so shall he make it Mungu anamwambia Musa na wanifanyie patakatifu ili nikae kati yao na kisha hiyo patakatifu anawaambia na wanifanyie mfano wa kile nilichokuwaonyesha after the pattern that i have showed thee yani the pattern ina maana ya kwamba kile anachofanyiwa anaambiwa aifanye sawa na jinsi ambavyo Mungu amemuonyesha kwa hiyo ina maana ya kwamba kuna kitu ambacho aliweza kuona ambayo ni the picture the true picture ambayo Mungu alitaka Musa aweze kutengeneza sikiliza Sijui ni wangapi kati yetu wamesahawai jaribu kuchora drawing mtu jaribu kuchora picha Simaanishi kwamba umechora kama mchoraji ama umechora tu hata kama vile vya vijiti unajua kuna vile tunachora vijiti unamchora mtu ambaye kichwa kama mpira alafu kijiti na mikono kama vijiti si umejaribu kuchora sisi wote kwa wakati fulani sio hata mtu umejaribu kuchora tu vitu vya ajabu ajabu sio na sijui kama tuko familia na kitu kinaitwa tracing paper wangapi kwa familia na kitu kinaitwa tracing paper Unapochukua tracing paper kazi yake nini unaweka picha ile ambayo unataka kuichora sio alafu unachukua tracing paper unaiweka juu juu yake alafu ukiwa pale juu kwenye tracing paper unaanza kuiona ile picha ambayo unataka kuchora vizuri sio alafu huku juu unachora after the pattern ambayo iko pale chini kwenye picha sio kwa hivyo kile ambacho unakichora kwenye tracing paper ni the pattern after the real picture the real object ambayo iko pale chini mtaelewana vizuri kwa hivyo inakuwa kwamba Musa anapoambiwa atengeze sanctuary after the pattern basi ina maana ya kwamba yeye alikuwa na copy and paste mnanielewa lakini sasa sikiliza tunasonga taratibu shahidi wa pili tunaangalia shahidi wa pili anaitwa apostle Paul anaitwa nani Apostle Paul. Huyu Apostle Paul msikilize anazungumza. Katika Hebrews chapter 8, Hebrews chapter 8 verse number 1 and verse number 2. Sikiliza anasema hivi. <clears throat> Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. Usijali mimi nimefanya hiyo. Nataka tuanze kufikiria kwa pamoja. Paulo anasema now of the things which we have spoken this is the sum anamaanisha nini Anamaanisha nini tuzungumze tuzungumze tunasoma tunakwenda taratibu Paulo anazungumza anasema now of the things which we have spoken this is the sum wewe ukisikia mtu anasema hivyo anamaanisha nini Hiyo sum sum inamaanisha nini S U M Acha nikuwekee kidogo tuangalie. Anasema now of the things which we have spoken this is the sum. Anamaanisha ni This is the conclusion, yes. Eh. Uh-huh. The summary of everything. Yaani kwa lugha nyingine Paulo anasema hivi, usini quote. Usiweze kuzungumzia maneno yangu kama hujaelewa. Don't quote anything or don't quote me if you fail to understand this. Kwa nini anasema this is the summation of everything. Kila kitu umesikia nimezungumzia mimi kama Paulo, this is the summary, this is the summation, this is the conclusion thereof. Anasema, we have such a what? An high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty where in heaven. Sasa fuata the thought. Anasema, who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heavens, a minister of the what? of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord pitched and not who and not man. Kwa hivyo anasema Christ or the high priest is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty where wapi hapo 
in heaven. Na pale in heaven tunaambiwa he is a minister of the sanctuary. So if this minister of the sanctuary is located at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven, sasa swali nauliza where is this sanctuary located? Hiyo sanctuary iko wapi? Eh eh tuongee tuongee tunakoma tarati Asante. Sasa ndio swali ninauliza. Ndio swali ninauliza. Unajua shetani yapendi somo hili la sanctuary message ndio anakuwa na fitina vingi tu lakini tunamuelewa. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 1 to verse number 2 anasema now of the things which we have spoken this is the sum this is the conclusion. Kisha anasema we have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty where in heavens. Kisha anasema a minister of the sanctuary kwa hivyo kama huyu high priest ako set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heavens na he is ministering in a sanctuary ndio swali nimeuliza where is this sanctuary located where is this sanctuary located in heavens tunaelewa vizuri na kwenda pole pole sasa sikia anasema kama yeye ana minister in, 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 in ako anapatikana at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven kule basi ndio pia the sanctuary inapatikana tunaambiwa he is a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the lord pitched and not man unapomsikiliza paulo anasema hebrews chapter 8 verse number 5 sikiliza tunaambiwa who serve unto the example and what again and the shadow of heavenly things as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle for see saith he that thou make all things according to the pattern shield to thee in the mount kwa hiyo tunaambiwa ile pattern ambayo Musa anaonyeshwa na kile ambacho Musa anatengeneza anatengeneza after the pattern anatengeneza kitu ambacho tunaambiwa inaitwa the shadow an example in the shadow kwa hiyo mfano ni kuulize ikiwa nichukue mkono wangu sijui kama mwangaza uko vizuri ungeona nichukue mkono wangu alafu niweke mwangaza upande huu kivulia mkono wangu utaonekana wapi upande ule wa ukutani sio sasa kwa mfano mimi nina kivuli si ndio ukitoka nje pengine mwangaza unanimulika kivuli changu kinakwenda upande huu sio sasa mimi nikienda upande huu kivuli changu kitaenda upande ule tuna tuna tuna, tuna, tuna waza taratibu tunasoma nikienda upande huu kivuli changu kitaenda kule ama kitaenda na mimi kitaenda na mimi sio kwa hivyo inakuwa kwamba a shadow ni kwamba kivuli ni kitu ambacho unakitazama ili kikusaidie kuweza kuelewa the real thing tunaelewana vizuri maana kama kivuli kinakwenda upande huu basi itakuwa kwamba the real the object pia kinakwenda upande upande huo na ndio wakati mwingine iwenda ikawa pengine pale kwenye kona kona pengine jua linatokeza upande huu na nimulika kivuli yangu imetokeza upande ule wa mbele na mtu anatokea upande huu. Akiona kivuli atajua kuna mtu upande huu, sio? Ile kivuli kitakuwa kina, kinaashiria kwamba kuna mtu yuko hapo kwenye kona. Ambapo akishafika kwenye kona atapata kuna mtu. Na nielewa vizuri. Kwa hivyo tunaambiwa kwamba ile hekalu ambayo Musa anaambiwa atengeze ilikuwa ni kivuli after the pattern. Kwa hivyo ilikuwa kwamba basi ni kivuli ambao kwamba matukio yote aliyokuwa anaendelea ndani ya hekalu ilikuwa ni kivuli cha hekalu ambayo ipo mbinguni ambao tumeangalia kule ndipo Kristo ana minister. Utaweza kunielewa taratibu tunapozidi kusonga. Sikiliza. Shahidi watatu. Naangalia shahidi watatu ambaye shahidi watatu anaitwa Yohana Jonah. Yohana yule aliyeandika kitabu cha ufunuo na injili ya Yohana. Tunaambiwa katika ufunuo moja aya yake ni ya kumi hadi 13. Msikize Yohana anazungumza. John chapter Revelation chapter 1 verse number 10 to verse number 13 anasema hivi I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet saying I am alpha and omega the first and the last and I turned and see the voice that spake with me and being turned I saw seven golden candle stick unapoingia kwenye hekalu seven golden candle sticks zilikuwa zinapatikana wapi in the holy place katika hekalu. 
Kwa hivyo kwa kwamba Yohana anasema wewe kama uamini maana anaona wanadamu mpaka sasa kuna wadabitista wengi ambao hawaamini kwamba ipo hekalu. Anasema ya kwamba wewe kama uamini there is a sanctuary in heaven mimi niliona kwa macho yangu. I had a vision na nikaiona. Na ndio anasema hivi ya kwamba I saw seven golden candle sticks and in the midst of the seven candle stick one like unto the son of man. Nani yeye anaitwa the son of man? Who is the son of man? Is he also the son of God? Yes. Na ndio huyu Yesu Kristo unapomwangalia he is the mediator. Yeye ndio unasikia maandiko inasema ya kwamba yeye ndiye mpatanishi. Yaani yeye Kristo alikuwa ni mwana wa Adamu, anaitwa mwana wa Adamu na bado ni mwana wa Mungu. Yaani Yesu kwa mkono mmoja amewashika wanadamu na kwa mkono mwingine ameshika kile cha enzi cha Mungu. Yaani huyu Yesu Kristo ndio tunamwangalia ambaye tulianza jioni ya jana tukaangalia ya kwamba tunapozidi kumtazama Yesu Kristo tutabadilishwa kuwa kama nani kama yeye waliokuja jana ndio tulianza kuangalia kwa hivyo unapoangalia there is a sanctuary in heaven have evidence number three. witness anazidi kuzungumza jioni ana anasema and the temple of god was opened where in heaven yeye yeah, anapoona the temple was opened where another name for the temple ni the sanctuary kwa lugha nyingine anasema and the sanctuary of god was opened in heaven and there was seen in his sanctuary the ark of his testament the ark of the testament yani the ark of the covenant sanduku la agano analiona wapi in the temple in the sanctuary in heaven yani yohana anasema mimi niliona kama wewe uamini mimi niliona kwa macho yangu i saw it na ndio tunapoongelea mambo kuhusiana na the heavenly sanctuary hiyo si invention ya sister white hapana maana watu wanasema ni mambo ya wasabato mimi nikikuuliza tumeangalia mashahidi hawa watatu tumemwangalia Yohana sivyo tumemwangalia Petero si tumemwangalia Samani sio Petero tumeangalia um, Yohana tumemwangalia na, 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 na Paulo na tumemwangalia na, 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 na Musa nikuulize swali Musa alikuwa ni mwadventista msabato alikuwa kwa jina anaitwa mwadventista msabato hakuwa Paulo alikuwa kwa jina anaitwa mwadventista msabato hakuwa Wadventista wa Sabato tunakuja kuanza kutambulika kwa jina baada ya 1844. Huyu Yohana Mbatiza, Yohana huyu alikuwa ni kwa, kwa jina anatambulika kama Wadventista wa Sabato. Kwa hivyo imani hii ya kwamba kuna sanctuary in heaven ni ya Wadventista wa Sabato au ni imani ya Mungu. Si ni neno kwa la Mungu. Alafu mbona basi tuna shida wakati dada White anasema there is a sanctuary in heaven tunataka kumpiga mawe mpaka tunataka kumuua. Angalikuwa hai leo hii tungekuwa tulimuua zamani. Mbona kuwe na shida wakati sio sio ya kwake si ipo kwenye Biblia au Biblia hii tumeitoa wapi Sikiliza Anasema anaona the ark of his testament yani sanduku la agano sanduku la agano inapatikana in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary na ndani ya sanduku la agano hapo ndani yake ndimo mna 10 commandments ambao Mungu anaita anasema they are the law of liberty according to James chapter 2 verse number 10 to verse number 12 yani ni sheria ya uhuru na ndio maana yake nimetangulia kuambia kwamba this is not bondage maana kwa muda mrefu tunapoziangalia sheria za Mwenyezi Mungu tunaanza kuona kama ni bondage ni utumwa yani kuanza kuzitii sheria za Mungu zinaonekana kana kwamba ni utumwa lakini sheria za Mungu sio utumwa maana anasema they are the law of liberty ni sheria ya uhuru freedom na ndio anasema Yesu ndio tumeangalia these are God's promises tutaweza kuangalia siku zinakuja hapa mbele kufikia siku ya sabato tutakuwa tumeelewa ya kwamba unapoziangalia amri kumi za Mwenyezi Mungu unaanza kuziona kumbe ni ahadi ya Mungu they are God's promises they are ten promises of God kwa wanadamu kwangu na kwako na ndio unapoangalia nikupatie na shahidi mwingine wa nne shahidi wa nne witness number four ambaye anaitwa King David. Anaitwa nani? King David. Unajua wengine mtaanza kusema unajua hivi tu ni kama ni ya Paulo. Maana Paulo ndiye anakaa na ongelea ongelea hivi tu ya sanctuary. Lakini sikiliza. Msikize huyu huyu Daudi anazungumza mapema. Anasema this shall be written for the generation to do what? For the generation to do what? To come. Da- Daudi anazungumza, anasema hii itaandikwa kwa kizazi kijacho kumbe haikuwa hata ni ya kwa wakati wake na ndio jioni ya leo acha nikwambie hicho kizazi kimesha kuja maana kutoka 1844 kizazi hicho kinaingia katika uswa dunia na ndiye anasema ya kwamba this shall be written for the generation to come and the people which shall be created shall praise the lord for he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary where 
from heaven. So is there a sanctuary in heaven? Yes. Kuna hekalu, there is a sanctuary in heaven. Na kuna evidences nyingi tu ambao ukitaka tuendelee kuweza kuangalia. Zipo nyingi tu lakini mla utaruhusu. Anasema from the height of his sanctuary from heaven did the Lord behold the earth ya kwamba akiwa in the sanctuary in heaven. Kwa hiyo tunapozungumzia heavenly sanctuary hatuzungumzii mambo yetu when we talk of the heavenly sanctuary we are talking of something that is right there in the word of God these are not the things the invention of sister white these are the words of God himself through his servants it is scattered everywhere in the bible ya kwamba ndivyo Mungu anavyotaka uweze kulewa ya kwamba the sanctuary the dwelling place of God yani ndio hii inaitwa patakatifu Unapoingia katika patakatifu yani the sanctuary unagundua kwamba the sanctuary ilikuwa imegawanyika katika sehemu mbili ambapo katika lugha ambayo unaweza ukaelewa zilikuwa sehemu mbili ambazo kulikuwa na apartment mbili alafu kulikuwa na courtyard yani outer court ile ua kama vile kanisa linaua kwa hivyo ilikuwa kwamba ulikuwa unakuja na uh, ukiingia hekalu ulikuwa unatokea upande huu wa eastern yani the eastern side unapoingia unaingia kitu cha kwanza ambacho ulikuwa unakutana nayo ilikuwa inaitwa the altar uh, of sacrifice kwa hivyo ekali ilikuwa imegawanyika into kulikuwa na pale nje ilikuwa inaitwa outer court alafu kulikuwa na holy place na the most holy place yani patakatifu pa patakatifu na kisha ulipokuwa unakuja kuingia utakapogundua nikutajie tu tunaposonga utakapogundua ya kwamba hii kila sehemu katika hekalu ilikuwa inaashiria huduma ambaye Kristo alikuwa anafanya katika mpango wa wokovu maana tumeangalia tumeona tunaambiwa ya kwamba the sanctuary ambao Musa anaambiwa tengeneze anaambiwa ni kivuli a shadow kwa hivyo kama ile ilikuwa ni kivuli basi the real thing ipo katika mpango huu wa wokovu ambao Mungu anataka kukamilisha the real object ipo katika mpango huu wa wokovu ambao Mungu anataka kukamilisha kwa hivyo inakuwa kwamba kile ambacho Musa alikuwa anafanya na Waisraeli waliokuwa anafanya vyote hivyo vilikuwa vinasonda kidole mpango wa wokovu na ndio unapoangalia katika hekalu Ukiangalia jinsi ambavyo the furnitures zilikuwa zimepangwa katika hekalu ukiangalia unaanza kuona the plan of redemption Ukiangalia ulikuwa unatokea hapa vi ndivyo ilikuwa imepangwa unaposoma kwenye maandiko utagundua zilikuwa imepangwa the ark of, uh, of, of, of sacrifice the, the altar of sacrifice zamani alafu kulikuwa na leva beseni ya kutawadhia alafu ulipokuwa unatoka vilikuwa vimelingana tu hivyo ukitoka ukiingia pale mbele kabisa ndani ya the holy place ulikuwa unakutana na kitu kilikuwa kinaitwa the ark of, the, the altar of incense zamani na kisha ulipokuwa unaangalia upande ule mwingine ulikuwa unapata upande wa north yani upande wa kaskazini ulikuwa unapata kitu kinaitwa the table of shewbread na kisha unapokwenda the southern part ulikuwa unapata kitu kinaitwa the seven branched candlestick na kisha ukiingia the most holy place mbele tu imelingana kabisa ulikuwa unapata na furniture ilikuwa inaitwa the ark of the covenant yani nikigeuza picha hii ni isimamisha hivi utaona imechorwa kama msalaba yani unapoingia kwenye hekalu it was all about the plan of redemption sasa sikiliza basi nikupeleke taratibu uweze kuangalia. Katika ekalu hii au katika patakatifu ilikuwa na faces tatu kwenye ministry ya Yesu Kristo. Faces ngapi? Tatu. Outer court ilikuwa ni face one. Holy place ilikuwa ni face two na the most holy place ilikuwa ni face three. Ambapo in the outer court ilikuwa ni start ya ministry, face two ilikuwa ni middle na face three ilikuwa ni finish, yani complete. Nifuate taratibu. Ninapotaja hivi, ninataja kwa mapema alafu kisha nirudi nyuma sasa tuanze kuangalia hatua taratibu tukisonga. Kwa hivyo katika hekalu kulikuwa na three phase ministry. Phase one, phase two, phase three. Phase one was the start, phase two was the middle and phase three was the finish, the completion of the ministry. Yaani mpango wa wokovu ulikuwa unakamilikia hapa kwenye phase three. Na ndio unaposoma great controversy page 423 paragraph 1. Great controversy page 423 paragraph 1 tunaambiwa that the sanctuary was a complete system of what was a complete system of what of truth kwa hivyo the sanctuary if the sanctuary was a complete system of truth which means the outer court the holy place the most holy place phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 start middle finished then if you only have an understanding of phase 1 of outer court the start do you have a complete system of truth or you only have a one third of truth Mnaninyamazia tu hivyo hivyo. Mnataka kunigomea, sio? Mnagoma, sio? 
au mnanielewa au mmechanganyikiwa wangapi wananielewa wanaelewa mpaka sasa wangapi wameelewa mpaka mahali tumefika okay aya acha sasa tuende taratibu niulize swali ili tuelewane mimi ninapouliza maswali sio kwamba ninaweka mtihani ambao ninataka kusaisha ah ninapouliza maswali inanisaidia kuweza kuelewa darasa langu kama wanaelewa au kuna vile tumechanganyikiwa mnanielewa kwa hivyo mnaponijibu mnanisaidia kuelewa kama ninasonga mbele au nirudi bado niongeze msisitizo ili mweze kuelewa maana niliwaambieni mie hamna haja nimalize siri hii kama hamjaelewa ni afadhali tubakie kwenye masomo mawili tu hii ya kwanza tulioanza jana na ya leo na tumalize wiki hii na mkwe mmenielewa kuliko ningangane nimalize alafu amjaelewa kitu mimi sina haraka kwa hivyo nataka muweze kunielewa amina kuelewa ni muhimu sasa anasema nimesema hivi ya kwamba Uh, unapoangalia outer court holy place na most holy place ni ambao ni phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 of the ministry ya yeah, the plan of redemption ambayo ni start middle and finish na tumeambiwa ikiwa yote tatu the three phases is a complete system of truth kwa hivyo ndio nimeuza swali ikiwa uko na understanding peke yake ya outer court you've only experienced the outer court in your christian journey the outer court phase 1 which is the start do you have a complete system of truth or you only have one part of truth You, have, you only have one part of truth. Kwa hivyo bado umebakisha mengine mawili for you to have a complete system of truth. Tunaelewana vizuri? Haya tunasonga pole pole. Tunaingia bado pale pale kwenye hekalu. Tumeangalia hapa kulikuwa na altar of sacrifice. Hii ilikuwa inaitwa lever. Alafu kisha tulikuwa na the seven branch candlestick. Kisha tukawa na the altar of incense. Tulikuwa na the table of shewbread alafu kule mwisho in the most holy place tulikuwa na the ark of the covenant alafu hapa katikati from the holy place to the most holy place kulikuwa na veil yani pazia ambapo unaposoma maandishi yale ya zamani ya kibrania utaambiwa it was a 10 cm thick veil ile ilikuwa ni 10 cm thick ilikuwa ni pazia nzito ambayo ilikuwa inatenganisha the holy place and the most holy place ambapo sasa ilikuwa inatengenezwa ndio unaposikia pale kwenye ufununa unaambiwa ya kwamba uh, unaposoma pale kwenye kitabu cha Luka unaambiwa ya kwamba Yesu anapokata roho pazia la hekalu inapasuka katikati ilikuwa ni pazia nzito ambayo sio nguvu ya mwanadamu iliyoweza kupasua ilikuwa ni uwezo wa Mungu ndio ulipasua maana sasa Mungu alisema imefanya nini imekwisha it is finished and uh, aliposema it is finished it was more than that ambao tutaweza kuelewa sasa kwa dakika chache maana ulimwengu umechanganyikiwa kwa kutokuelewa tunaelewa hapa katika altar of sacrifice hapa katika mpango mzima wa wokovu hapa ndipo Yesu Kristo hapa altar of sacrifice hapo ndipo Yesu Kristo anaangikwa na kufa kama mwana kondoo wa Mungu aichukuae dhambi ya nini ya ulimwengu Yesu Kristo anaangikwa hapa at the outer court Mahali ambapo kafara ya mwana kondoo alikuwa anachinjwa. Hapo hapo ndipo Yesu anaangikwa. Na akiwa msalabani, Yesu anasema neno hili, it is it is finished. Hili neno ndilo limewasumbua Wakristo wengi mpaka leo hii. Maana Wakristo wengi ambao tunaamini ikiwemo wa Adventist wa Sabato, tunaamini ya kwamba mpango wa wokovu Yesu anaposema it is finished, alimalizia pale pale msalabani. Mnanielewa lakini? Tunaamini ya kwamba Yesu alikamilisha alimaliza msalabani ndivyo wakristo wengi wamefungiwa na maneno haya matatu kwa kutokuelewa Yesu alikuwa anamaanisha nini aliposema it is finished Wasabato wengi tunaamini ya kwamba yote yamekwisha kuna wimbo tulikuwa naimbaga zamani nikiwa mtoto tulikuwa naimba pale kalivari yote yamekwisha si ndivyo tulikuwa naimba sio ya kwamba we believe that Jesus finished everything at the cross the plan we believe that the plan was completed at the cross lakini sivyo na ndio maana lazima tuanze kuelewa sasa nifuate taratibu ili ukaweze kuelewa Yesu alipokuwa anasema it is finished alikuwa anamaanisha nini sikiliza Unaposoma Romans chapter 5 verse number 6 Romans chapter 5 verse number 6 sikiliza nikusaidie uweze kuelewa Romans chapter 5 verse number 6 maandiko inasema in yet while we were without strength Christ died for the ungodly ya kwamba wakati ulipokuwa tuna nguvu Kristo alikufa kwa ajili ya wenye dhambi wote Sikiliza tunaambiwa for when we were yet without strength in due time Christ died for the ungodly wakati tulipokuwa hatuna nguvu kwa hivyo Yesu Kristo anaposema imekwisha Yesu Kristo alikuwa anamaanisha hivi unaposoma kitabu cha ufunuo Revelation chapter 12 verse number 10 sikiliza ndio uweze kuelewa Yesu alikuwa anamaanisha nini 
Revelation chapter 12 verse number 10 sikiliza e kitabu cha ufunuo Revelation chapter 12 verse number 10 sikiliza Maandiko yanatuambia hivi Revelation chapter 12 verse number 10 sikiliza andiko linasema hivi And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of uh, uh, of, of, his, of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accuseth them before our God day and night and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto death universe number 11 kwa Yesu anaposema imekwisha tunaambiwa kwamba in yet while we were without strength wakati tulipokuwa tungali hatuna nguvu Kristo alikufa kwa ajili ya wenye dhambi wote ili atupe nguvu na ndio tunapoingia katika kitabu cha ufuno tunaambiwa sasa imekuja nguvu now is come strength maana tulikuwa hatuna nguvu na uwezo na ndio unaposema kitabu cha ufunuo wa Yohana ni kitabu cha Yohana Yohana ni moja mbili tunaambiwa bali wote waliompokea aliwapa uwezo aliwapa nguvu the power ambao hatukuwa nao maana ilikuwa ni vigumu kwa wanadamu kuweza kushinda dhambi ndio the plan was not completed mpango wa wokovu hauko umekamilika lakini nguvu na uwezo wa kuishinda dhambi tunaweza tukaipata leo hii ili tuweze kuishinda dhambi kwa imani iliyo ndani ya Kristo Yesu na ndio Yesu anasema it is finished sikiliza Ephesians chapter 2 anasema your weakness has come to an end it is finished unyonge wako umefika mwisho it is finished Kitabu cha Waefeso Ephesians chapter 2 sikiliza andiko linasema hivi Ephesians we are reading Ephesians chapter 2 verse number 13 and verse number 14 sikiliza andiko linasema hivi Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13 and verse number 14 tunaambiwa but now in Christ Jesus you who are sometimes you who sometimes were far over are made nigh by the blood of Christ for he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us ya kwamba Kristo huyu anapokufa anaposema it is finished anasema ule uadui the partition ambayo ilikuwa imesimama ambapo ilikuwa ni uadui kiambaza kilichokuwa kati amesha kiondoa now it is finished you can overcome sin even presently by the grace of Christ. Ya kwamba uwezi ukangangana tena katika uovu wako ndio mpango wa wokovu haujakamilika maana kuna phase 1, phase 2 na phase 3 bado kwenye phase 1 anaposema it is finished anasema hivi you can experience by faith the experience of the holy place ukiwa hapa nje in the outer court. You can experience the holy place experience so the plan is not yet completed. Maana the, when the plan is completed ama mpango wa wokovu unapokamilika Yesu Kristo atarejea nielewe vizuri taratibu maana mpango ukikamilika Yesu anakuja kwa hivyo kama Yesu bado hajakuja aliposema it is finished anasema ya kwamba the plan was not yet completed so the plan is not yet completed but victory over sin can be acquired even today utaipata mpaka leo unaweza ukaipata leo hii kwa imani iliyo ndani ya Kristo Yesu bwana wetu Na ndiyo unapoangalia in the outer court ilikuwa inaashiria the ministry of Christ here on earth his work here on earth kwa hivyo ilikuwa ni huduma yake hapa duniani na ndipo baada ya Yesu kufa Yesu Kristo anapotolewa kafara msalabani anapokufa anapofuka siku ya tatu. Na ndio Yesu Kristo anapofuka siku ya tatu, ndio unaposema katika matendo ya mitume moja ayake ni ya tisa hadi moja, Yesu anapofuka na mwisho anapaa kwenda mbinguni na ndio unaposikia habari kuhusiana na ubatizo Utasikia maandiko inaweka wazi Paulo anapozungumzia anasema ya kwamba mimi nimekufa ama nimesurubishwa pamoja na Kristo I am crucified with Christ nevertheless I live yet not I but Christ liveth in me ya kwamba wote ambao tunataka kuweza kuipokea wokovu wa Kristo lazima tuweze ku experience kila kitu katika kila hatua ya Yesu Kristo Unapoingia katika kitabu cha Ufunuo wa Yohana 14 ukisoma aya yake ni ya kwanza hadi ya tano utagundua kundi la watu wanaotajwa pale ambao waliweza kuishinda dhambi maandiko inapowataja utasikia tunaambiwa they follow the lamb where so ever he goes walimfuata mwana kondoo popote endapo Unapoangalia the outer court was the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ Hapa Yesu Kristo alikuwa anaishi kama alikuja kufa akiwa ni the dying or a dying lamb. Mwana kondoo aliyekufa kwa ajili ya ondoleo la dhambi za watu wote. Na ndiyo utakaposoma utakaposoma kwenye ekaru ile ambayo Mungu anaambia Waisraeli waweze kujenga. Utagundua kwamba mwana kondoo alipokuwa anachinjwa alihitajika kuhani kuweza kuteka damu ya mwana kondoo ya yule kafara ili akaweze kuingia naye into the holy place. Damu ile ambayo ilikuwa inaashiria maisha ya mwenye dhambi yule ambaye ameitoa kwa imani 
kupitia wakafara ya mwana kondoo damu ile ndiye alikuwa anaingia nayo hapa in the holy place kisha anainyunyizia katika pazia hii iliyokuwa inatenganisha the holy place and the most holy place ikiwa ni kufanya upatanisho hapa maana the ark of the covenant juu yake kulikuwa na kiti kinaitwa the mercy seat Masi seat ndio kiti cha enzi cha Mungu. Kwa nini inaitwa masi seat? Yaani kiti cha rehema ni kwa sababu God is merciful. Mungu ni mwingi wa rehema. Tunaelewana lakini? Kwa hivyo ndio ana kiti yeye akiwa mwingi wa rehema amekaa juu ya kiti cha rehema. Maana unapoangalia ndani ya sanduku la agano ndani yake kulikuwa na amri kumi za Mwenyezi Mungu. Unaposoma kitabu cha Warako wa kwanza wa Yohana tatu aya yake ni nne tunaambiwa dhambi ni uasi wa sheria sin is the transgression of the law kwa hivyo mwenye dhambi alipokuwa anafanya dhambi kulikuwa lazima upatanisho uweze kufanyika 